Hi, man, Drew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. You might recognize something like this, and this is a HID lamp, a high HID, high intensity discharge. Sounds close enough. And this was for a motorcycle, but basically it's a, a drop-in replacement for the standard, I think, H4 size bulb and or lamp. <laughs> And you can see here it's a bit munged because you have to adapt it. So I think I've I've put these on so that it would fit onto the terminals that would normally go onto the back of the bulb because of course it has to go off to this um, via some waterproof connectors, a little harness to this ballast. And that's because you need a whole, whole complicated mechanism for getting these lit. And you can see that I have kind of touched this, which is probably not recommended. You have to make sure you give it a darn good clean now in operation, otherwise the oils from your finger are gonna damage this. But you could see in there, there's a little envelope and there are some uh, wires going through that, which are going to ignite this arc. So they are, it is an arc light and that's why they're so bright. But I thought it'd be cool if we can get it going on the bench here. And if we can get it going on the bench, then we can uh, open this up and have a look inside just to see what's what in there. Should still work. I've not used it for a while because I actually don't like the light and they're not particularly good um, when you're retrofitting them into the uh, lens assemblies of your existing vehicles because obviously the geometry of them all is different. And frankly, LEDs have already made these pointless. So LED lighting just replace them right out of the gate now. They are, and they're, they're an absolute pain when they start failing. Oh, so you saw that. That was interesting, because it just flashed. I don't know why we're not getting a... Oh, I see, it's the bench power supply. I'm going to turn the uh, current limiter right up to the whatever the maximum on this thing, but maybe it just can't supply it. There you go. So that's using... It's very bright, by the way. <laughs> I'm trying not to look at it. But that's using... 3.7 amps, 3.5, this is at 12 uh, volts, 3.4. So it kind of feels that as it's warming up, the current is sort of stabilizing going down. And I'm gonna turn it off now because that's absolutely blinding. But I will say it's not really any brighter than just looking at an LED. And that is quite a high uh, current though, isn't it, really? So let's have a look inside at what what uh, this does. Oh gosh, always with the uh, fancy screws. They don't want you to take it apart. But I do like the uh, enclosure. Ballast G4. Caution, spelt wrong. C-A-U. <laughs> S-I-O-N. Corsion. You need to be corsious. Corsion or so on it. Let's say, look, it does actually have it on there. 35 watts out. Maximum 4.8 amperes. And you can see when they ignite, they do use a little bit. I'm sure if we had some way of measuring that, you'd see a spike in that current. But that's pretty much the same printing. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be seeing much potentially in here. Let's try the other one. I love that print in there, though. It almost looks like the potting is. Um, it's like the potting itself was embossed, but of course it's just that end plate. I really don't want to break it, I don't think I'm, but I don't think I'm going to use it. So it's like, yeah. It's the sort of thing that could be fun to put on a lawnmower or something like that. But you don't have a nice um, bit of voltage coming off there. Well, current coming off the magneto. You'll have enough just to keep the battery charged. But you, you probably just end up running out, running down your battery at this kind of rate. I wonder how the old motorbikes used to do it before they had proper alternators. I suspect be like a dynamo or something like that. So let's pop this end. Oh yeah, we can get to the uh, get gubbins this end. I'll just have to figure out how to uh, deal with this stripped screw. It's very weird. It's almost like a factory script screw, but that just about getting enough bite at that weird angle. That'll do. It's jammed in there. And there, we've got all everything. So I wonder why they've potted it just in one end. I really feel we should be able to just push this out. 
can have a little go at that. <clears throat> I can feel there's a component there. Let's pick, let's pick at it, shall we? Oh. Sometimes you start projects that you wish you didn't start, but you feel compelled to continue. Ooh, what is that? Oh, there is interesting stuff in there. There's a little circuit board on its edge. So we've got a circuit board on the bottom, but also a circuit board on its edge. Oh, well, I might have to be start being a bit more careful here. Look, there's a component there. I'm hoping... I didn't damage any of these surface mount components. Yeah, they really don't want you to get at this. Well, I think we're at the point of no return now, aren't we? We might as well crack on with this. Spent a couple of minutes on the grinder and uh, it gave me a moment to ponder about the book of Boba Fett finale that I watched last night. and. My conclusion was most enjoyable. A fitting conclusion to uh, an interesting story. Right, now I think we want to get this prized open. So I went along the edge just to, just because we know there's really not anything in the edge. So I can, thought I'd peel it open. You'll be able to see inside. Look at that, that looks lethal by the way. That looks like if you get your finger <laughs> pinched in there, we've made a some sort of finger guillotine that would definitely take a bite out of you so yeah I'm going to avoid taking a bite out my hope is of course we can just splay the aluminium tin open in fact I don't know if it is aluminium it didn't grind like aluminium but Ugh. it's got some that's got some strength to it still <laughs> don't bite me don't bite me don't... Oh. okay right that can go in the bin this is getting very interesting now. So what are the bets on this working after this process? I suspect it should. I don't think we've managed to break anything just yet. And it's quite impressive how these cages just snap once you get beyond their elastic limit. Okay, a bit of plastic on there. Now I will be able to get in there and give this a proper little clean up chopping this RTV. Now I suspect there probably are uh, chemicals out there that will eat RTV. I know that if you, for example, want to get rid of some silicone in your bath, because you've made a mess of it, you can use WD-40, so it's sort of oily based things can get in there and erode it. I guess if you're doing any kind of teardown like this, it depends on the purpose. If you're kind of curious, you need to make sure whatever you do though won't destroy what you're uh, tearing down on any chance to read off any of the components. If there is something down there, I think it might be a resistor. See, for example, that's the kind of detail that you might want to preserve. And I'm guessing if you jumped a load of solvents in here, it would just pull all the uh, resistor color things off. It would melt the plastics on the capacitors. A oh, bit of a rub. Transformer, that's what it was. It wasn't a diode, it's a transformer. So effectively, it's a bit like a coil pack for your car. It's creating a very high tension output. So that's going to be, I think, another hot coil, really. If it's any, I think like we've uh, like a flyback coil. Ta-da! We are revealed. So I've had a little look. There's a little eyeball on it. Once we got the. RTV off and actually I was wrong I don't think these are this isn't a power regulator I think this is a MOSFET and this one is also a MOSFET and then you have this transformer and this little board as it turns out once you read the actual markings on the chip and google them it's a TL494S which is a pulse width modulator so I think that what's happening here is it's determining uh, the frequency of uh, it's, it's basically um, creating uh, an AC from a DC so you have this is a DC from your motorbike or vehicle and then this circuit is putting a 
turning that DC into AC so that of course it can go through into that sort of charge discharge cycle through the um, output coil here. But I was sort of like wondering why is that um, transformer in there? And I'm just wondering, right? I'm just speculating. I've no idea. It's not Big Clive, right? <laughs> um, is that uh, this little MOSFET is all part of it. I think it's to do with the ignition and possibly measuring. There's some sort of loop back um, feature here, right? You need to know how much current is going on at the end to switch off the igniting phase and then just put it into that running phase. And there's, I think this is all part of it. I think it's uh, using that to detect what's going on at the far end. But it's interesting enough, isn't it? It's basically uh, a very high uh, voltage uh, output. And if you probably touch that when it was running, it'd probably give you a bit of a shock. Um, you probably shouldn't power it up when it's not in a case, but I think we will because we're just curious to see if it's still dead or alive and Maybe this will be the last video I make if I do a big jump and uh, well, Actually, who's gonna post it to YouTube? That'd be quite morbid anyway, so, so it's probably it's probably okay if you're seeing this I'm sure I didn't expire um, Hmm <laughs> But it is possibility that the board has because I'm not seeing anything we are on power is on and I'm not seeing any current. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no, look. I did break off a surface mount transistor. Feels wrong doing this, but I'm gonna take <laughs> take a uh, transistor off a previous prototype of a product that uh, I designed and just sold in the shops. But I've got so many billions of versions of this and so many revisions of boards, I think we can sacrifice a little bit off it. I'm certainly never gonna plug it in again. Ah, don't blow away. <laughs> There we go. Now, the moment of truth. I mean, there's absolutely no reason why just any random transistor should actually work, but assuming it even was a transistor or an NPM, PMP, there's a lot of reasons it could still continue to not work. But let's see, three, two, one. Ha 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 ha! Hooray, look at that. I love it, I love it. There we go. So I don't know what we learned from that. Um, apart from we managed to tear down something, managed to break it in the process and managed to repair it again. So I think we did cover a lot of things. Cool. I'm gonna sling that somewhere. I don't know, what do you reckon? Shall I keep this? It's certainly uh, it's seen better days. Hmm. Answers down below. And I'll, I'll abide by your ruling. Thanks for watching.